Honourable Members, the Honourable Stephen John Gagler, AC, Justice of the High Court of Australia. Instrument of appointment authority to administer the oath or affirmation of allegiance to members of the House of Representatives. I, General the Honourable David Hurley, AC, DSC, retired, Governor General of the Commonwealth of Australia, acting under Section 42 of the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Australia, authorise the Honourable Stephen John Gagler, AC, a Justice of the High Court of Australia, to administer the oath or affirmation of allegiance to members of the House of Representatives. Dated 1 July 2019, David Hurley, Governor General, countersigned by His Excellency's command, Scott Morrison, Prime Minister. I lay on the table duly endorsed writs for the election of members of the House of Representatives for all states and for the Australian Capital Territory and the Northern Territory. Will honourable members please come to the table in the order in which their names are read so that they may make an oath or affirmation. Cook, Scott John Morrison. Riverina, Michael Francis McCormack. Kuyong, Joshua Anthony Frydenberg. Pierce, Charles Christian Porter. Flinders, Gregory Andrew Hunt. Dixon, Peter Craig Dutton. Bradfield, Paul William Fletcher. Wannan, Daniel Thomas Tian. Fadden, Stuart Roland Robert. Gippsland, Darren Jeffrey Chester. Honourable members, please take the Bible in your right hand. Do each of you swear that you will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law, so help you God? I do so help me God. We do. I do so help me God. I do so I do so Thank you. Please sign you. Sign you. Maranoa, David Kelly Littleproud, McPherson, Karen Leslie Andrews, Hume, Angus James Taylor, Farrah, Susan Lee, Hasluck, Kenneth George Wyatt, Aston, Alan Edward Tudge, Mitchell, Alexander George Hawke, Banks, David Bernard Coleman, Durack, Melissa Lee Price, Deacon Michael Sven Sukar, Parks Mark McLean Coulton. Honourable members, please take the Bible in your right hand. Do each of you swear that you will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law, so help you God?
Graindler, Anthony Norman Albanese, Carrio, Richard Donald Marles, Watson, Anthony Stephen Burke, Sydney, Tanya Joan Plibersek, Ballarat, Catherine King, Rankin, James Edward Chalmers, Barton, Linda Jean Burney, Hindmarsh, Mark Christopher Butler, Griffith, Terry Megan Butler, uh, Hunter, Joel Andrew Fitzgibbon, Isaacs, Mark Alfred Dreyfus, Gorton, Brendan Patrick O'Connor. For those members making an oath, please take your Bible in your right hand. Do each of you swear that you will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law, so help you God? Yes. Members taking the affirmation. Do each of you solemnly and sincerely affirm and declare that you will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law? I do. McMahon, Christopher Isles, Guy Bowen, Greenway, Michelle Ann Rowland, Maribyrnong, William Richard Shorten, Blacksland, Jason Dean Clare, Kingston, Amanda Louise Rishworth, Brand, Madeline Mary Harvey King, Hotham, Claire Ellen O'Neill, Blair, Shane Kenneth Newman, Whitlam, Stephen Patrick Jones, Shortland, Patrick Martin Conroy, Scullin, Andrew James Giles, Bert, Matthew James Keogh. Members taking oath, please take the Bible in your right hand. Do each of you swear that you will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law, so help you God? Members taking the affirmation, do each of you solemnly and sincerely affirm and declare that you will be uh, faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law. I do. Bass, Bridget Kathleen Archer, Reed, Fiona Barbutus Martin, Swan, Stephen James Irons, Wright, Scott Andrew Buckholtz, Forrest, Nola Bethwin Marino, Latrobe, Jason Peter Wood, Petrie, Luke Ronald Howarth, Brisbane, Trevor Mark Evans, uh, Tangy, Ben Morton, Capricornia, Michelle Leanne Landry, Calair Andrew Robert G. Honourable members, please take the Bible in your right hand. Do each of you swear that you will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law, so help you God?
Dobell, Emma Margaret McBride, Morton, Graham Douglas Perrett, Cooper, Geraldine Mary Carney, Fremantle, Joshua Hamilton Wilson, Lingiari, Warren Edward Snowden, Kingsford Smith, Matthew James Thistlethwaite, Eden Monero, Michael Joseph Kelly, Fenner, Andrew Keith Lee, Jellybrand, Timothy Graham Watts. Members taking the oath, please take the Bible in your right hand. Do each of you swear that you will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law, so help you God? I do, so help me God. Members taking the affirmation. Do each of you solemnly and sincerely affirm and declare that you will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law? I do. Longman, Terry James Young, Lindsay Melissa Iris, Iris McIntosh, Higgins, Katrina Jane Allen, Robertson, Lucy Elizabeth Wicks, Chisholm, Gladys Lou, Braddon, Gavin Bruce Pierce, Moncrief, Angie Marie, Marion Bell, Goldstein, Timothy Robert Wilson, Herbert Philip Thompson, Bonner, Ross Xavier Vasta, Groom, John Joseph McVeigh, Wentworth, Devon, Devon and Noel Sharma. Honourable members taking the oath, please take the Bible in your right hand. Do each of you swear that you will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law, so help you God? I do so. Yes. Members taking the affirmation, do each of you solemnly and sincerely affirm and declare that you will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law? I do. Macquarie, Susan Ray Templeman, Lily Annika Shea Wells, Karangamite, Elizabeth Ann Coker, Cowan Ann Alley, Solomon Luke John Gosling, Gilmore Fiona Evan Phillips, Lyons Brian Keith Mitchell, Dunkley Peter Jan Murphy, Parramatta Julie Ann Owens, Bean David Philip Benedict Smith, Cunningham, Sharon, Leah Bird, Richmond, Maria, Justine Elliott.
Honourable members, taking the oath, please take the Bible in your right hand. Do each of you swear that you will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law, so help you God? Thank you. Thank you. Members taking the affirmation, do each of you solemnly and sincerely affirm and declare that you will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law? I do. Monash Russell Evan Broadbent, Curtin Celia Monica Hammond, Barker Anthony Passon, Fairfax Edward Lynham O'Brien, Sterling Vincent Gerard Connolly, Canning Andrew William Hasty, Bowman Andrew Charles Lamming, Sturt James William Stevens, Ryan Julian Graham John Simmons, Leichhardt Warren George Ench. Benelong John Gilbert Alexander, Fisher Andrew Bruce Wallace. <laughs> Honourable members, please take the Bible in your right hand. Do each of you swear that you will be faithful? and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law, so help you God. I do, so help me God. Chifley Adam Nuruddin Husik, Spence Nicholas David Champion, Bruce Julian Christopher Hill, McEwen Robert George Mitchell, Perth Patrick Possum Gorman, McNamara Joshua Solomon Burns, Patterson Merrill Jane Swanson, Oxley Dougald Mil Milton Dick, Holt Anthony Michael Byrne, Werriwa Anne Marie Stanley, Lawler Joanne Ryan, Fowler Christopher Patrick Hayes. Mm. Members taking the oath, please take the Bible in your right hand. Do each of you swear that you will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law, so help you God? I do, Sister God. Members making the affirmation, do each of you solemnly and sincerely affirm and declare that you will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law? I do. Barawa Julian Martin Lisa, McKellar Jason Falinski, 
Hughes, Craig Kelly, Menzies, Kevin James Andrews, Moore, Ian Reginald Goodenough, North Sydney, Trent Moir Zimmerman, Ford, Albertus Johannes Van Manen, Gray, Rowan, Eric Ramsey, Boothby, Nicole Jane Flint, Casey, Anthony David Hawthorne Smith, O'Connor, Richard James Wilson. Honourable members, taking an oath, please take the Bible in your right hand. Do each of you swear that you will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law, so help you God? I do so, help me God. Members making an affirmation, do each of you solemnly and sincerely affirm and declare that you will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law? I do. Jagger Jagger, Kate Lynn Thwaites, Newcastle, Sharon Catherine Clayden, Canberra, Alicia Emma Payne, Fraser, Daniel Mulino, Wills, Peter Khalil, MacArthur, Michael Randolph Freelander, Macon, Ant Antonio Zappia, <laughs> Bendigo, Lisa Marie Chesters, Adelaide, Stephen Georgianis, Corwell, Maria Van Vapamu. Honourable members uh, making an oath, please take the Bible in your right hand. Do each of you swear that you will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law, so help you God? I do so. Members taking the affirmation, do each of you solemnly and sincerely affirm and declare that you will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law? I do. Uh, Flynn, Kenneth Desmond O'Dowd, Nichols, Damien Kevin Drum, Hinkler, Keith John Pitt, Lyon, David Arthur Gillespie, Cowper, Patrick John Conahan, Page, Kevin Jace, John Hogan, Dawson, George Robert Christensen, Malley, Anne Elizabeth Webster, Wide Bay, Llewellyn Stephen O'Brien. Honourable members, please take the Bible in your right hand. Do each of you swear that you will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law, so help you God?
Indi Helen Mary Haynes, Melbourne Adam Paul Bant, Kennedy Robert Carl Catter, Clark Andrew Damian Wilkie, Mayor Rebecca Karina Shay Sharkey, Warringah Zali Stegall. Honourable members making an oath, please take the Bible in your right hand. Do each of you swear that you will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law, so help you God? I do so help you God. Members making the affirmation, do each of you solemnly and sincerely affirm and declare that you will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law? I do. I do. I do. The next item of business is the election of a speaker. Is there a nomination for speaker? Call the member for Robertson. Thank you, Mr. Clark. And I move that Mr. A. D. H. Smith do take the chair of this house yeah. as speaker. It is my privilege to be able to nominate the member for Casey as the speaker today, particularly as in the 44th and the 45th parliament, I had the honour of seconding his nomination alongside my friend, the member for Deakin, and to also serve on the speaker panel during this time. The member for Casey has been a personal friend for a number of years now and a willing mentor when I was first elected to this place as the member for Robertson in 2013. But indeed, I'm not alone in calling the member for Casey a friend. Many of us would also consider him so, and yet it hasn't prevented him from calling upon Standing Order 94A when needed, which a number of members in this place no doubt would be familiar with today, perhaps some more so than others. During his time as Speaker, the member for Casey has been fearless and impartial with his rulings. I can think of no one more qualified or deserving to take the chair as Speaker as he's able to balance the robust nature of debate in this House with the dignity and respect for our parliamentary traditions, while still bringing his quick wit and his personality to this place. The member for Casey, of course, is well known for his love of political history, but I also draw to the attention of the House his love of the history of motor vehicles. And in 2017, the member for Casey rightly cemented his reputation as one of the parliament's biggest revheads by immortalising in the parliamentary record as he ruled a question from the member from McMahon out of order in the following way. In his ruling, he provided the following explanation for ruling the question out of order by saying, let me put it in more simple language. 
I just I, I don't think I can do the tone of the way that the member mm -hmm. for Casey does this, but I'll do my best. Let me put it in more simple language. You cannot come along with a Holden badge and stick it on a Mazda and say it as a Holden. The question is out of order. <laughs> The role of the Speaker is no doubt without its challenges, but the member for Casey has always acted impartially, with grace and with fairness, sometimes no doubt to the chagrin of members of this side of the House. And he embodies the dignity of this office and the rich heritage of this place. He will serve the Parliament and the people of Australia in a manner in which we can all be proud, and he brings considerable experience as an outstanding advocate for his community a distinguished parliamentarian, a mentor and a leader, and it's with a great sense of honour that I commend the member for Casey's nomination to the House. Yeah. Is the nomination seconded? I call the member for Caldwell. It's a great pleasure to be given the opportunity to second the nomination for the member for Casey as Speaker of the House of Representatives in the 46th Parliament. The member for Casey and I entered Parliament as the class of 2001. We were two of the seven newly elected Victorians. That was, in fact, a bumper crop that year for the great state of Victoria. A total of 21 members made up the class of 2001. Many colleagues have since left this place, but eight still remain. And although 18 years can make you feel old at times, the member for Casey today does not look a day older than he did when we first met during our induction otherwise known as Poly School in this place. Much has happened in this place since our arrival here in 2001. Our side of politics, for one, has fought very hard in the last seven elections to win the federal seat of Casey, and of course each time the member for Casey has prevailed, a sure sign that he is a diligent and popular local member and of course has no time to budge any time soon. So today, as we commence the 46th Parliament, I'm really pleased to second the nomination of the member for Casey as our Speaker. As a member of the Speaker's panel in the 45th Parliament, I had the opportunity to work with the member for Casey as he and the Speaker's office provided strong support and guidance to all the members of the Speaker's panel. It was clear to us all that the member for Casey was determined to ensure that the integrity of the office of Speaker <laughs> and indeed the integrity and dignity of the House of Representatives Chamber was upheld at all times, above and beyond the theatre of political tactics and shenanigans that are a common feature of this place. As Speaker, the member for Casey faithfully adhered to the implementation of the House of Representatives practice. He was both thoughtful and fair in his deliberations and decisions. There were times when he was truly challenged, but he always managed to remain calm and unfazed. As such, he has earned the respect and confidence of his place. Now, of course, is a good time, uh, as any, for me to let the member for Casey know that during our frequent briefing sessions in the last parliament, he came across at times as a bit stern and strict <laughs> in his expectations of us. But that is a reflection of his professionalism as well as his dry sense of humour. He is actually a very good bloke. And I want to finish by saying that as much as I respect the member for Casey for his professionalism and demeanour, I by no means share his interest in and enthusiasm for V8 Holden Monaro <laughs> and restoring panel bands, because as the member for Cornwall, I have to remind him and everyone else in here that we were once Ford. <laughs> so, so both, however, we are Carlton supporters, and that places us in a smaller, unique class of people who must stick together as we patiently wait for the glory days. So I want to uh, acknowledge that as a member of the class of 2001 and a fellow of the great state of Victoria, the member for Casey has gone on to distinguish himself as an excellent local member and an excellent speaker in the best of the traditions in this place. Does the member for Casey accept the nomination? I accept the nomination. Is there any further proposal? The time for proposals has expired. <laughs> I, I declare that the honourable member proposed, Mr A. D. H. Smith, has been duly elected as Speaker. Yeah.
very much. Sorry. I wish to express my grateful thanks for the high honour the House has been pleased to confer upon me. And I call the Prime Minister. Well, thank you, Mr Speaker. And can I be the first to congratulate you on your election again as Speaker? And in doing so, I'm sure you would agree um, to pass on my congratulations to all members of, of this House, uh, both in particularly first elected to this chamber, which is a great privilege and an enormous responsibility, and I know for all of you and all of your family and, and friends and those who have supported you, um, this is a very special moment for all of you and for those who have been given the great honour and opportunity to be re-elected to this place as members of this great House. I equally congratulate you and all those uh, members and uh, family, friends and, and others who have gathered here today to share this very important day uh, with you. But to you, Mr Speaker, you have many late great loves and passions in this life, none greater than Pam and the boys, who I know once again will be deeply proud of their dad today. But uh, you have the great passions that we've heard for the Carlton Football Club and your Holden panel van and, and many other things which we have discussed on so many occasions as great friends. But one of your great passions is this house, this chamber, and the role that it plays in our great country. You bring a real honour to this institution. This is the second time that you have been elected to this position following an election unchallenged. And I think that says much about the respect with which you are held by all members of this House. You understand its responsibility. You understand that we all come here, and particularly on a day like today, expressing great hopes and, and noble intentions. But these are things that you have always lived as a man, as a member of your community, in your family, as a friend and as a member of this House. And that is what best commends you to this role more than any of each of us here could. You have a wise and calming presence in this place. The normal passions and the heat of the debate that occurs in this place you accept and you celebrate, but at the same time you temper us in those times when, of course, there is overreach. But in this role, Mr Speaker, you also do something which I think is truly great, and that is you honour and you work so well with those who serve us in this chamber, and you lead them incredibly well. And so, in congratulating you again on your elevation to speaker today, I think you'd join me in also thanking all those who serve us in this house. The sergeant at arms, the clerks, and you'll forgive me by paying a particular thank you to the clerk, David Elder, given what the speaker advised us before the election. And he wouldn't want us to indulge that moment too much, I know, but he enjoys the deep respect and gratitude of this House yeah. for his yeah. service. The attendants, the librarians, the cleaners, the drivers and all the support staff make up the team that serve us here in this place, and you lead that team, Mr Speaker, in your own inimitable way. Those who work for the parliament watch over this institution. They don't just serve us, the members, but more importantly, they serve the Australian people. And as we come together here for this first time in this place, we all know that our focus should be not on the people who are inside this building, 
but indeed to serve those who are outside this building who will always remain our focus. So we thank you again for your work in advance in shepherding this 46th parliament as its speaker. And Mr Speaker, I look forward and the government looks forward to working with you as we have always done so in the past. God bless and I wish you all the best in your endeavours and responsibilities. I call the Leader of the Opposition. Thank you, uh, Mr Speaker. On behalf of the Opposition, I offer you my sincere congratulations on your re-election to the Office of Speaker. I congratulate all those new members of Parliament. And I say to them that you can be an MP without being a parliamentarian. The Speaker is indeed a parliamentarian in the truest sense of the Westminster tradition. Uh, you love this institution, uh, you're passionate about it, and uh, you bring great credit uh, to all of us uh, with the way that you conduct yourself. Of course, uh, we on this side of the House would have preferred a different result on May 18. But I'm pleased to see that you're back in control of the House. You are as fair and impartial a speaker as I've seen on either side of politics in my more than two decades in this House. And indeed, uh, Mr Speaker, you are for the third time un elected unopposed. That is the first time that that has occurred in more than a century, since the beginning of indeed this parliament going back to federation. Uh, the fact that you've been nominated by the government side and seconded by the opposition side is to your credit and also, I think, uh, will be welcomed by Australians who want to see solutions rather than arguments in this place, wherever that is possible. Of course, from time to time, uh, it will be the case that there are arguments, uh, but uh, you've always conducted yourself with diligence, grace and good humour, and that has assisted, I think, in focusing attention uh, from members of this House uh, on outcomes and more what unites us rather than what divides us in the legitimate debates and contests that will take place over the future direction of this country. Uh, we at times uh, will be passionate. Uh, I will be too, you might notice. But uh, what we need to do always is to recognise that the standing orders and the procedures that are in place uh, are here so that those debates are conducted in a way that produces outcomes and really focuses on the needs of the Australian people rather than on ourselves. And you have always conducted yourself in that way. Of course, your task is more than just chairing the parliament. As the Prime Minister has said, uh, you also lead the parliament in terms of the officers, the clerks, all who work to make this institution operate on a day-to-day -day basis. And you do that in a way which has always been consultative, particularly over some difficult issues. Uh, national security is a much greater issue today uh, than it was uh, when I and yourself were elected uh, those years ago. And it's important to get that balance between the openness of a parliament whereby people can come along and can hear debates and participate uh, with uh, those uh, national needs. Your job also is to be the representative of the parliament of all of us, which is why it's important that you've been elected unopposed. I've welcomed you to my electorate on, uh, on two occasions where you've attended uh, Birchgrove Public School and spoken to uh, the young primary school kids there. And I know that uh, you've travelled to places like Broken Hill and right around the country to talk to school children. I think it's a really good sign, uh, particularly uh, when, uh, I must say, when you've been welcomed into uh, electorates not held by government members, that they get to see that uh, what they see on the nightly news of the 30-second grab isn't everything that happens in this place, and indeed that the institution of parliament and Westminster democracy is something that we shouldn't take for granted. Australians do understand that politics is about a contest of ideas. I'm convinced that uh, Australians do want less argument and more outcomes. You've achieved an outcome today, which is a good one for you, but a good one for the parliament. And I say on behalf of Labor, uh, that uh, to the Prime Minister that our nation looks to see what we can deliver 
uh, for them in the 46th Parliament. I'm up for it. We're up for it. Let's begin later today. The Leader of the House. I'm oh, sorry, the Deputy Prime Minister. Well, thank you, Mr Speaker, and congratulations on your re-election. Uh, Mr Speaker, you are fair, sometimes even funny. You are, <laughs> you are measured, you are considered, you are impartial. You are everything a Speaker should be. And you're the only Speaker in the Parliament since I've been here in 2010 who has not thrown me out. In fact, there's always time. There's always time. But, Mr Speaker, uh, I don't think you've even threatened to throw me out under Section 94A. The member for Parks has, when he was Deputy Speaker, filling in the yes, member for Sydney, there is still time. But, uh, but the member for McKellar certainly threw me out. But, Mr Speaker, on behalf of the National Party and certainly on behalf of rural and regional Australia, I want to say congratulations. I want to say uh, good luck. Uh, Mr Speaker, um, I, I don't uh, give up. Uh, private conversations uh, with other members of parliament, uh, but I'm going to because I know the person. <laughs> I'm going to publicly and I'm going to at the dispatch box. And it was the member for Grainler. We were sitting on a plane uh, going to Sydney one time, and, uh, and in a, uh, a free and frank conversation, the member for Grainler said, uh, Tony Smith is a very, very good speaker. A very good speaker. And uh, he extolled your virtues as I do today, uh, Mr. Speaker. I know that you care deeply about the Westminster system. I know that you care deeply about tradition. I know that you care deeply about the future. And I know also that you care deeply about rural and regional Australia, which of course is so important for myself, for the National Party in particular, for the government and indeed all parliamentarians, particularly at this time of drought, because the Speaker has on several occasions phoned me to ask about my own electorate, to ask about uh, uh, the ongoing implications of the drought uh, for all those rural and regional electorates uh, so badly affected by this prolonged dry spell. That's the measure of the man. Uh, we've re-elected him. We wish him well. We know you'll do a good job in this 46th parliament. Congratulations. The Deputy Leader of the Opposition. Thank you, uh, Mr Speaker. And it really is fantastic to be able to uh, give you my well wishes and uh, my uh, congratulations in your election to the speakership today. As you know, Mr Speaker, um, we have been friends and known each other for more than 30 years, uh, attending as we did together Melbourne University. And I remember back in 1988, I was the president of the Student Representative Council, having been elected as a member of the Labor Club. The giants who roamed this stage in, in those days were the likes of uh, Graham Richardson and Robert Ray, and they had a certain prowess as numbers people, which I think in your eyes probably uh, unreasonably gave an aura that rubbed off on me. <laughs> and I remember you bounced into my office, uh, at the, as I was the president of the SRC at the time, you bounced into my office and you said, uh, mate, mate, uh, <laughs> I'm going to be running for the president of the Liberal Club this afternoon. That's good. And I said, uh, he said, so this meeting isn't happening? I said, sure. <laughs> and, uh, and he said, and he said, and if you ever tell anybody, <laughs> he said, mate, if you ever tell anybody about this, I'm going to deny it. <laughs> yeah, no worries. But mate, you're a Labor guy. Tell me how to do the numbers. <laughs> I can assure you that the Speaker did go on to become the president of the Liberal Club that afternoon. Um, and given the oath that you've just taken, uh, Mr Speaker, which of course prevents you from misleading this House, um, you will not be able to deny this story going forward. But uh, I said to you when you became the Speaker for the first time that it really was a thrill for those of us who have known you and been friends with you over that period of time. I mean, your politics have always been hopeless, but you have been <laughs> a wonderful guy. And as we have watched you blossom in this role, and you most certainly have, to become one of the really great speakers that this nation has seen, which has led to an honour today in being elected unopposed, and now you will serve in this role for a really significant period of time, which will put you at the very top of the list in terms of people who have contributed as Speaker of this place. I can just say to you, as a lifelong friend, for me to watch you in this role has been an absolute thrill. 
The Leader of the House. Yeah, after the Leader of the House. <laughs> Steady on. Um, Mr Speaker, in that role, I'd like to also add yeah. my congratulations on your re-election to the role of Speaker in the 46th Parliament of the House of Representatives. Of course, great democracies like ours are often described as rules-based systems. And I recall a lecturer in law school in an arcane unit called Civil Procedure that many in this House would have endured, including yourself, say something to the effect that rules were at the heart of civil procedure and civil procedure was at the inescapable heart of the law. And I remember thinking at the time, this unit sounds completely awful. Um, and indeed, a genuine affinity for civil procedure is a very uncommon thing. And also it could be said that as parliament is at the heart of democracy, so the observance of rules of engagement are always at the heart of parliament. And I further remember that upon first meeting you, Mr Speaker, in the context of one of the many committees that abound in this place, I was struck immediately by the sense of just having met one of those truly rare people who deeply and authentically possess a foundational respect, indeed an almost romantic commitment to process, rules and procedure. And that commitment is as rare as it is unfakeable. And the broad recognition that we are fortunate to have a parliamentarian with a genuine love of our history and procedure in this most important of roles is evident by the manner of your re-election unopposed. So, Mr Speaker, uh, viva la procedure, and <laughs> the government benches look forward to abiding with unending enthusiasm with the wisdom of your rulings. The manager of opposition business. Uh, Mr Speaker, you've made history today. And what's happened today, we shouldn't be lost on the significance of the moment. Uh, the first Speaker in Federation, Speaker Holder, was never opposed and was elected three times unopposed. And no subsequent Speaker has managed that until today. Uh, it speaks volumes uh, for how you have handled the role. It was also the case that uh, while a dissent motion is not a confidence motion, uh, dissent motions have been relatively routine, and more so over the years. Uh, Speaker Holder never had a dissent motion against one of his rulings and never had a vote of no confidence moved against, against him. You have achieved the same. Uh, so what has happened today in the parliament, we shouldn't get lost in the, the and lose the significance of the moment. Uh, so, for you, Mr Speaker, you have been co absolutely consistent in rulings. There have been moments where uh, I've taken a point of order, haven't liked the ruling, uh, but whatever you've ruled, whether it's worked for the government or this side or whatever, you've just kept the consistency and the predictability of your interpretation of the standing orders. You've also allowed the debate to flourish. Uh, I acknowledge the, the presence in the chamber of your predecessor, former, former Speaker Bishop. And one of the comments that was often made from the chair uh, during that time was, we are, we are not just some polite debating society, we are a parliament. And you've allowed the robustness of that debate, uh, the fierceness of that debate to flourish, uh, and allowed at all times the debate on the floor to be the issue rather than yourself. There are many times for members of parliament when someone, on, be it on that side or on this side or on the crossbench, goes through a very difficult time. And when that's occurred, there has effectively been, you know, we talk about the procedural role in here, but there's been, let's call it a pastoral role, call it whatever you want, uh, where you have taken an interest in the welfare of every member of this place. Uh, and those members who've been helped by that reaching out at different points know who they are. But what it has shown is that you have had a determination both to respect the precedence of this place, to keep the order and administration of this place, but to be a speaker for every one of what used to be the 149 people that you look out over, now the, the 150. Uh, and it's because of the way that you've handled that role that today you've made history in a way that no speaker for this parliament since the first parliament has been able to do and you should be commended for that. Yeah.
The member for Kennedy. Mr. Speaker, uh, you recognise that there is other elements in this parliament, except uh, those on your left and those on your right. Uh, and uh, we people up here, and we deeply appreciate that. Um, I uh, appreciate the personal interest you've taken in me, and you've given me holidays on at least two occasions. And I thank you sincerely. Uh, and uh, I think we will all endeavour to work uh, cooperatively with you. Uh, coming into the future. Um, but I think it is important that people in this place represent their constituencies, and that's particularly true of the people on the crossbenches. And uh, you've respected that, and we haven't always had that respected. And I would uh, crave a little less attention to myself, Mr Speaker. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, members, can I say what a, an honour and humbling experience it is to be uh, elected again as your speaker, uh, elected for the third time uh, unopposed and uh, today to be nominated uh, by the member for Robertson uh, with that nomination, seconded by the member for Corwell. And I thank you both for your very kind words um, during uh, your nomination speeches. Can I thank the Prime Minister, uh, the Leader of the Opposition? and everyone that's spoken for uh, their very kind uh, and, I, I've got to say, humbling words again. Uh, to the Deputy Leader of the Opposition, thank you for the history and for uh, everything you said. I'm sure you'll get the call at some point during this parliament. <laughs> we'll ponder that. And to the 27 new members again, uh, I know this is such a special day uh, for all of you. And as I said uh, when we met last week, it is a rare and special honour to be a member of this House of Representatives. Uh, you take the number to just over 1,200, 1,203 members who have served in the House of Representatives since Federation. And uh, that's something we all should reflect on every day. Uh, that we're here. It really is a rare and special honour. A number of um, uh, the speeches the Prime Minister, Leader of the Opposition, um, pointed out that uh, this is a debating chamber. And it is. It's the arena where the battle of ideas and ideals takes place. And it's right that it should be vigorous and passionate and robust. In fact, there's just been a hard-fought election where uh, members from different political parties have expressed different views on the best way forward for Australia, and they've been elected. So it would be strange if there was unanimous agreement on every single issue after a, an election. Indeed, it wouldn't be representative <laughs> democracy at its best. But, of course, uh, it is important that the arguments, vigorous, passionate and robust as they are, are carried out in a dignified way. And it's important that there's a balance in all of that. And I've always sought as speaker to try and get that balance right and to be as fair and predictable uh, as I can be. Obviously, question time is very much the focal point of the day, that 70 minutes. Uh, where that contest is at its most intense. Um, and I do think uh, that there are aspects of question time uh, that we can all improve on, but today is not the day uh, to talk about those matters. Once again, can I, I thank you uh, for the incredible honour of being your speaker, and I look forward very much to presiding over uh, this House in the days, weeks and years that follows in the 46th Parliament. Thank you so much. The Prime Minister. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I have ascertained that it will be his excellently the Governor-General's pleasure to receive you, Mr Speaker, in the Members' Hall immediately after the resumption of sittings at 2.40 p.m. I thank the Prime Minister. Prior to my presentation to His Excellency this afternoon, the bells will be rung for five minutes so that honourable members may attend in the chamber and then accompany me to Members' Hall. The sitting is now suspended until approximately 2.40 p.m. This afternoon.